Our next division of gymnosperms is the Conifera phyta. The phyta ending, of course, tells us this. Up until now, we've been seeing divisions with relatively small number of species. The Conifera phyta is much larger. Some of the ones that you know in this division, or might know, of course, you know Pinus. Pinus is the genus name for the pines. Cedrus. The cedars. Taxodium. The bald cypress. Common in the swamps of the eastern United States. Juniperus. That's the genus. This is the junipers. Suga. You might not know that generic name, but these are the hemlocks. Very common, beautiful trees of the Appalachian Mountains. Unfortunately, now endangered because of an invasive bug, the woolly adelphid, which is killing them off, but really beautiful trees. And then some trees of the western United States, sequoia. the currently largest trees in the world. These are the coastal redwoods. And sequoia dendron. These are the giant redwoods of the Sierra Nevadas. So these are all cone-bearing plants. And in general, the, can the cones are woody. So they have wo kind of a woody cone. They also have needle-like or scale-like leaves. And these leaves usually stay on for more than one year. So these are mostly evergreen trees. There's a few exceptions, but they are mostly evergreen. In some cases, the cones stay on the plants more than one year also. And we're going to look at an example of that when we look at Pinus. So our main study genus for this division is going to be Pinus, the pines. And so here are a couple pines. Here we have a eastern pine on the left growing in North Carolina, typical kind of, almost kind of scrubby to me sometimes in our eastern pines. And then a western pine, a very high elevation western pine, over here. Now, I don't want to say that these growth forms are typical for east and west. It depends more on elevation and latitude than it does whether you're east and west. So the western pine is at a high elevation. The light's going to be coming in from the side, and you can see that the leaves are very well situated to receive light from the side. The eastern pine over here on the left is getting a lot of rays of the sun coming more down, directly down on it, and it's very well situated with the leaves in order to receive those rays. But anyway, two examples of pines with very different growth habits, and there are others. But in all of these cases where we look at the pines, and this is true of most of the conifera phyta, almost all of the conifera phyta, we have a single growing point. So there's a single leader, we would say, on these trees, a single apical bud, and these things grow upright with lateral branching. Very typical kind of branching pattern in these guys. Well, here's our life cycle. It's a typical dibionic life cycle like we've been studying. Let's find our two main parts of the life cycle. Here's meiosis. There's fertilization. 
So we would draw our meiosis fertilization line like this. We have the haploid portion here and the diploid portion down below that line. The diploid portion is or has larger plants in it, so it's drawn as larger part of the life cycle. And this is the plants that you would see if you looked outside. A pine tree is in the diploid portion of the life cycle. Haploid portion is reduced to the pollen grains and the ovules. And we will study, see more of that as we go on. We're not going to look at it too much on this diagram. One thing we do want to look at here is what's really different about the morphology of these plants in the conifers. So in the conifers, we have our ovules. Here's our ovules. And here's one in cross section there. And they're born on what is called a cone scale. Or sometimes it's called an oviliferous scale, an ovule bearing scale. Ferris means to bear. So a ovule bearing scale. This is a modified branch. And we know that for a couple reasons. One is because of its anatomy, and another is because if we look right below it, if we look down here, we see that there is a little leaf-like organ. They're called a bract. A bract is just a modified leaf that occurs in a reproductive structure. So there's a leaf-like organ, a bract, underneath there. And so when we have something occurring in the axle of a bract, we know that it's a branch. Branches occur in the axles of bracts. So this is a modified branch. The cone scale is a modified branch. The cone scale bears the ovules. So this is not a megasporophyll. So this is something pretty unique to the conifers. But all the conifers have this. They have modified branches bearing the ovules on the female side. The male side is more normal. It's got strobily and microsporophylls. And you can see them labeled up here, a microsporophyll. We'll come back and look at that more as we go on. Here's some vegetative characteristics of these plants. Here's the stem. This is a growing stem. It's a lateral branch in this case. And we see on this lateral branch, we see these bundles of leaves. And a bundle is called in Latin a fascicle. So we say there's a fascicle of leaves. So a fascicle is then these bundles of leaves. And you know, when you pick a pine leaf, you don't usually just get one leaf, you get a little clump of leaves coming off. They're actually very short shoots, extremely short internodes. You can't see them unless you take a section through the stem there, the stem meeting that fascicle. And so these fascicles are very, very short shoots bearing leaves on them together, but they come off in bundles and so they're called a fascicle. You'll see them even more clearly over here, a line of fascicles there. And we, another way that we know that they are modified branches with leaves on them, a fascicle is a modified branch, is that they occur in the bracts in the axle of these little scale leaves. Here's a bunch of scale leaves. And in the axle of each of those, there would be one under here, one under here, etc. In the axle of each of those scale leaves, there would be a fascicle of leaves. If we take a cross section of a leaf, we would see something like this. And you would see how there could be more than one leaf there. 
going around to form a little bundle. So you see the needle, the leaves are all needle-like. So in pine, we have needle-like leaves. In other members of the conifera phyta, we find scale-like leaves. Here's a cross-section of a stem. Main thing I want to see, show is that there is secondary growth. So they're all woody. These are all woody plants. And in Pinus, we have resin canals. And you know, if you take and you wound a pine or you break a stem, often the sticky gooey gunk comes out of the side. And that's the resin, which acts as a defense against insects. Looking at a little bit later, we can again see there is the secondary xylem. And outside that here is the secondary phloem. So we can see again, this is pinus with several years of growth, all woody plants in the conifera phyta. Well, these plants are all monoecious. Pinus is monoecious. And we can see that if we look at a pine plant, if you look up at the top of a pine tree, you will see that the female cones are higher on the plant and the male cones tend to be lower. Here we see a branch on the left with female cones on it. No male on this one, but a female cones on this. This is a one-year-old cone. Here's a two-year-old cone. So they're going to, these cones are going to stay on the pine tree for a long period of time. And you see over, even at this two-year-old point, it hasn't shed its seeds yet. So that's going to take place later. So this cone is at the end of two years or into the, well into the two years that the seeds are shed. The seeds are shed and the cones remain on the plant. So when you see these big pine cones on trees, they're more than two years old and they can remain there for a long period of time before they fall. So they're going to be shedding after about 18 months or so into that two year period. Um, and that's when the seeds are shed and then the pine cones remain on the tree. Here we see an open cone here. And if we look at the top of the cone scales, we see here these are seeds. And this is the cone scale. Well, if we look back in time to a very early pine cone, before we get any of the seeds developing, that is at about the time of fertilization, we see something like this. And you've probably never noticed these before because you wouldn't have recognized them. Even if you'd seen them, you wouldn't have recognized them as a pine cone. So this is a female cone at the time of fertilization. These are the cone scales. And the ovules would be on the inside. So the ovules would be in there. This is not a megastrobolus. It's not because there are no megasporophylls. There are no megasporophylls because the cone scales are modified branches. Now, the other thing that we can see on here is we can see the fascicles of leaves. And we might as well point those out. Here's one, just a leaf opening up 
there's a fascicle. Here's another picture of a pine cone at the time of pollination. It's a female cone. And again, these are the cone scales. Or an ovaliferous scale. And if we could look down in there, we would see, I don't think we can in this diagram, but if we could look way down into that cone scale, we would see an ovule down in there, born on top of those cone scales. So again, about at the time of pollination. Let's take a longitudinal section and look inside that, and we would see something like this. So here again, we see the cone scales And here it is on the other side, this other diagram. We said we know that they're branches because there is a bract underneath them. So here's the bract. And on this side, on the left side, it's a little harder to see. We can see it over here a little bit better. There is the bract. So on top of the scales, then we find the ovule. So there is an ovule. And on this other side, here we can see an ovule. So we have the ovaliferous scales on these pine cones. So again, these are pine cones at about the time when pollination takes place. And we'll look at that process of pollination as we go on. Pollination and fertilization. Well, I've been showing you these really tiny bracts underneath these cone scales because that's what our eastern pines look like. In the western United States, there's another genus, Pseudosuga. Which has really large bracts. So you can see them, they're huge here. And so you can see in this case, underneath those bracts or in the axle of those bracts, we have a cone scale. So in Pseudosuga, it is much more obvious that the cone scales are modified branches and they occur in the axles of these bracts. Again, looking a little more closely at a Longitudinal section of a cone at the time of pollination. Again, this is the female cone. Look at the males later. And what we want to look at here is a close-up of something like this. There's the close-up over here. Here is the cone scale. The bract has been removed in this section, unfortunately, but it would be there. You'd find it there if it hadn't come off. We can see then in the center there is an integument. On the ovule and a megasporangium. As part of the ovule. And we'll go on and look at those in more detail as we study how fertilization takes place here. And you can see inside that cone we have the pollen drop. It's hard to see that the pollination drop. And these things here, this is actually probably a pollen grain sitting on that pollination drop, going to be drawn into the ovule. So it'll be drawn into the ovule, and that's about where we left off, showing those pollen grains being drawn in. So here's some pollen grains.
and the pollination drop then, of course this is a section so you can't see it, but it would be out here like this. And it would then be drawn in through the micropile. And here we have a pollen grain in the pollination chamber. So this is the integument. And as I said, the arrow then moves through the micropile. So what's going on on the inside now of the integument? Because we don't see all of the structures that we would expect to see. We don't see the, me um, the megagametophyte, the archegonium, and so on. That's because we're at a much earlier stage of development. We're at the megaspore stage. So here's the megaspore. And it's just about to begin dividing, or perhaps it's just got its first couple divisions there to form the megagametophyte. So the megagametophyte has not been formed at this stage, at this stage of pollination in the conifera phyta. What we have here, this whole thing out here, this is the megasporangium. So the pollen tube is growing down through the megasporangium at the same time as the megagametophyte is developing. And the next couple of slides will show us that process. So this one, this slide is not directly through the micropile. So we don't see all the same structures here. But we can see on the outside, the integument, it's hard to find a color that's gonna show up here. Is that, can you see that okay? Is that okay? I'm not sure that's going to work here in the center. So that's the integument on the outside. As I say, we didn't capture the micropile there. Down here is the megagametophyte. Now, a little larger. And this is the megasporangium again. So you notice in that megasporangium, there's kind of two areas. There's this area up in here where the cells look a little funny, and down here where the cells look a little more normal, densely cytoplasmic. The first area, there are pollen tubes growing through that area, and we're seeing the disruption of the cellular structure because there are pollen tubes making their way through that part. Again, it's not a great picture, but it does give you the idea that our megasporangium and our megagametophyte are growing at the same time as the pollen tubes are growing down toward what will be the mature megagametophyte. Little later stage, again on the outside is the integument. And I'm gonna switch colors now, I'll try back to red. Here's a pollen tube. Here's a larger megagametophyte. There's a lot of, there's some funny things that happen in the development of that megagametophyte. You see, it doesn't completely look cellular there. And we're not gonna go into those kinds of details in this class, but I just wanted to explain that it does look, we know that it looks funny and there are interesting developmental aspects about the development of that megagametophyte. So the pollen tubes you can see are growing down through the megasporangium. Here's another part of the pollen tube there. So this is all then megasporangium. continually growing down the pollen tubes. Now we got a big jump. We've jumped now to the mature egg. And the mature archegonium. Embedded in the megagametophyte. So this is all a lot bigger now. 
Outside the mega gametophyte, we have the megasporangium. And if we look here, this is the egg nucleus, in fact. We'll look at that again in a second. So everything is enlarged. Now, the gametophyte is mature. The egg and the archegonium are present. And this is at about the time of fertilization, which is what we'll look at next. So the pollen tube now has been growing down through the megasporangium and is about to deliver the sperm. Remember, the sperm and the conifera phyta are not mobile. There are no flagella on them. Let's look at the male side here a little bit. We see here, here are the tetrad of microspores. And then there is, there's a series of development, a couple stages of which are shown here. We're not going to concern ourselves with those. And here is the mature pollen grain. And you see that there are four cells. There are two prothallial cells, a generative cell, a tube cell. So it's four shells when shed. And again, this is the pine pollen, so we see those Mickey Mouse ears on those air bladders on the side, which are non-cellular structures. The pollen tube starts to grow out. And of course, it does that after the process of pollination, when it's now growing down through the megasporangium. <laughs> And in that process, again, there are, there are some other divisions that take place. We're not going to be concerned with exactly the sequence of division, but just say that the result is that we get two sperm. And they are non-modal. So non-mobile sperm, no flagella on them. They are dependent upon the pollen tube to deliver them. Now. <laughs> There's the pollen grain with the pollen tube growing out of it. You can see the nuclei starting to move down. That's probably the tube nucleus moving down there. You can see that in some cases the pollen tube will branch. This is not abnormal for a pollen tube to branch like that even when it's growing through the megasporangium. And of course, here are the air bladders. And the central part would be the body of the pollen grain. Oh, where did that come from? Oh. So while that's, <laughs> there's the pollen tube then again, reminded, growing down through the, Megasporangium. And this is the megagametophyte. We've seen that already, just reminding you, helps to repeat these things, what's going on here. So we've seen this structure, then we saw the pollen grain, and then back to this. Okay, this, this slide is oriented in a different way, so take a minute to for us to find, get our bearings here. But we're showing the same thing we've seen already. We've got the egg. Let me get some highlighter here. So here's in yellow. I'm not highlighting the nuclei. But there's the egg cell. In a section, over here we see it again, the egg. And then around the egg, we have the archegonium. Not really clear here, but that's why I highlight it. And not labeled. Hmm. 
And there's the archegonium. It's really a little bit outside that. You can see it in the slide in this section much better than you can in the drawing. There's that single layer of cells out there surrounding the egg. That layer of cells. Okay, so you got kind of oriented now. We're looking with the micropile then would be this way. So the pollen tube would be coming in then from the bottom. And we can go in and highlight the pollen tube. Nice boy color, blue. There's the pollen tube coming in. And we'll just, you know, the sperm nuclei A darker blue here are shown. It's a little too dark, isn't it? So there we've got the sperm nuclei. That's quite a different, well, we're just messing this up completely. The sperm nuclei. It's supposed to be a little bit darker blue. Okay, so you see that the pollen tube now is delivering those nuclei directly to the egg. And that's the main thing we wanted you to see here, that the pollen tube is growing directly into the egg and delivers the sperm directly there, specifically the sperm nuclei. And then the cellular apparatus of the egg, same things that would move organelles around the egg, move the sperm to the egg nucleus and fertilization takes place. So this is really a remarkable photograph over here and a drawing of that photograph because it actually shows the process of syngamy, of fertilization taking place. We have the fusion of the two the sperm and the egg nucleus taking place right there. Notice there's a second sperm. The second sperm is actually delivered to the egg, just like the first sperm does. In the conifera phyta, that sperm doesn't do anything. It disintegrates. It's not involved in a fertilization process. In the next two divisions, what we're going to see in the neophyta and in the angiosperms, that second, that second sperm is going to be evolved in a second fertilization, in quotes, event, a second vote, uh, event of fusion with a cell, not an egg nucleus now, with another cell in the egg apparatus. We'll talk about that more than when we get to those divisions, but I mention it now because it's a really important difference between <coughs> these divisions of the, of, the, of the conifers that we've been talking about, of the, yeah, of the conifers that we've been talking about, and the monophyletic group that consists of our next group, the nidophyta and the angiosperms. One of the characteristics that suggests that those are a monophyletic group is the fact that there's a process of using the two, both sperm are being used there in, a, in some kind of a fertilization event. So again, we'll come back to that. Very important change. So. Here we have the different parts of the egg again the archegonium, the megagametophyte, here's the egg nucleus, and again the sperm nucleus. So another picture of fertilization, here's the second sperm, and the pollen tube, here's the pollen tube coming in.
delivering those two sperm. So there's no archegonial chamber in the conifers, in the conifera phyta. No archegonial chamber because there is no mobile sperm. That's associated with the fact that there's no mobile sperm, and the sperm are just delivered then to the egg directly by the pollen tube. We've say, been saying that we're going to learn the parts of the embryo, and now it's time to do that. So here's the embryo of a conifer inside the seed. We can see the, this is not, we're just gonna skip that word to sell us. It's another term for the megasporangium. We're just gonna use megasporangium. So the seed coat has been removed here. We've got a little remnant of the megasporangium. The female gametophyte, is outside. There's the female gametophyte, and now let's find the parts of the embryo, that's that structure on the inside of the female gametophyte. You can see the female gametophyte over on the left, sorry, on the right also. I'm not able to color it in there so well, but there is a clear female gametophyte. Okay, to help us find the different parts of the embryo, we're gonna draw a couple lines on it. One of those lines is gonna be right here at the attachment of the cotyledons. So the cotyledons are the seed leaves So they are the leaves of the embryo. You'll see other pictures of them. So at the point they're attached to that stem, that axis, that's where we draw one line. We're gonna draw another line just above the root apical meristem. So here's the root, we just forgot the word root there, the root apical meristem, and we draw a second line there. So we've got then three areas. We've got this layer below, this area below the second line there near the root apex. We've got an intermediate area and we've got a top area. The lower area is the radical, which is the embryonic root. The radical is the embryonic root. Now to understand what we've got above, the, we need to understand the root of the word cotyledon. The root cotyl means cup. And actually I don't know what the root E-D-O-N, E-D-O-N-E-D -E means, but the cup is really what we need there. So there's a cup formed here. Now look at what is that cup. Well, let's let my versatile line again serve as a embryo now. And my head is that little apex there. So my, my arms are the cotyledons, right? So here are the arms held up straight and they're the cotyledons. In the middle of that cotyledon, there's the jute apex, which is my head the cotyledons form a kind of cup around that shoot apex. Now, my body looks a lot more like a cup than that does on the screen, but anyway, that's the idea here. We've got a cup shape around the edge. And so that gives us the name cotyledon. So the cotyledons are the seed leaves that form that cup around the shoot apex. The apical meristem then is what I said my head was, I said the shoot apex, but the apical meristem, a meristem is just an area of actively dividing cells. We looked at the 
cambium before. The cambium is the, ape, is the meristem that produces growth in girth. The apical meristem produces growth in length, like the root apical meristem produces growth in length. The root apical meristem produces the root, the shoot, apical meristem produces the stem. Notice that that line, now let's go back to our line. We've got the idea of the cup, and the cup is attached then kind of at my shoulders, at the area where I've drawn that line. The region above that cup, well, unfortunately, there's a bunch of names for it, but the easiest one to understand is the epi upon caudal, above the cup, or upon the cup. So what you find above that cup is the shoot apical meristem in this case. But now that shoot apical meristem is going to grow. It's going to grow and produce new parts of the stem. And so as that happens, the shoot apical meristem stops looking like a little mound of tissue. Right here it's just this little tiny mound of tissue. And it starts to look more like a feather. I'll show you a picture of that in a second. So another name that you sometimes see for the epicotyl is the plumule, it means feather, the plumule. They're basically the same things, the epicotyl and the plumule. If there's a difference in those terms, it's that the epicotyl, you talk about that when it's really in the, in the seed, when it's an embryonic structure, and you talk about the plumule when it starts to come out. But it, usage varies. This last division, We've got a third division here. And again, we are going to refer to caudal to make sense of that. So we look at this region then that is between or below the caudal. Hypo means below the cup. So the hypocaudal is that part of the axis that is below the attachment of the cotyledons, below the cup and above the root. So they say the hypocotyl root axis here, right? So it's, it's called the hypocotyl. I think they just didn't know how to make sense of it. So we'll call it the hypocotyl. It is, in other words, a part of the embryonic shoot. It has not been produced from the apical meristem. It's a part of the embryo. It's a very unique part of the embryo. So have you ever watched um, beans germinate and push up through the soil? If you haven't, go. Google of bean germination, and you'll see and you'll see in slow motion what they do. And so now, look at my arm. Here's the bean under the soil, and there's some cotyledons there, which are my hands. I've just got one cotyledon. There's usually two. And as that pushes up through the soil, my elbow comes up. And my, what's my elbow? My elbow is the hypocotyl. Pushes up through the soil, and then the hypocotyl straightens out to put those cotyledons upward. Watch the video of. Bean germination. Beans are not gym gymnosperms, of course. I just tell you this about this because you've seen a hypocotyl before when you've watched bean germinating, beans germinating. Let's try to find these pieces over here in the diagram, I mean, not in the diagram, in the section of the ovule, so that we draw a line there underneath the shoot apical meristem. And it's hard to find the root apical meristem, but it's there. So this is the radical down here. This is the hypocotyl here. Here are the cotyledons, and there, which I'm drawing, coloring in, that's the, so we've got three names for it. It's the shoot apical meristem, it's the epicotyl, and later on it's going to be called the plumule after it develops a little bit. Outside, excuse me, as we've already said, is the megagametophyte. You see why we didn't do that before. Here we see the same things again. You can find the same structures now. We're mostly going to look at this central diagram here, find our two lines, radical at the base. Hypocotyl in the middle, 
cotyledons at the top, they're forming a very nice cup there, and then that little piece, which we're going to call the shoot plumeris stem. or the apicotyl, or the plumule, as it gets a little bit bigger. The megagametophyte is outside. And this is the gym, the structure of the gym sperms. The other drawing and the other slide, you can look at yourself, find the same parts. Here it is again. This is an embryo of a pine, excised now, so we're seeing the surface of the pine. So someplace in here, around here, there would be the root apical stem meristem. So we would have below here the radical. At the attachment of the cotyledons, we would then separate the embryo into this middle section, the hypocotyl. Above it, we have cotyledons. And in the, in the pines, there's multiple cotyledons like that. So there's, we couldn't see those in their other diagrams, but there's always multiple ones like this. And then inside here, at about this level, there's the shoot apical meristem. or the epicotyl. Here it is germinating. Now we can see up here the seed coat. There's those multiple cotyledons. Here is the hypocotyl. <coughs> of course, the radical would now be down in the soil. And we can see that there is now a little bit of a shoot. They are forming above the attachment of the cotyledons. And now you can see it looks a little bit feather-like, right? So now we would call it the plumule. Or we could call it the plumule. It's still called the, it can still be called the epicotyl. It's, it's, there's different names that are used for it now. It's a young shoot. But you might see the word plumule, so I've included it here. So that's a very nice photograph showing all the different parts of a young embryo of pine just after germination. So is this embryo, is that diploid or haploid? Diploid. It's diploid, it's the sporophyte. So we're looking at the sporophytic generation. Just to remind you, here's the pine cone. I said third year plus, I could really say second year plus. It's really late, It'll be very late second year, probably third year. All the seeds have been shed at this stage. Remember that these are not megasporophylls, these are modified branches. And the ovules are born on top of that. The ovules and then the seeds are born on top of that. In most pines, the seeds are winged and they're shed and they will fly in the air a little bit anyway, and you'll see those in lab. Here's our <coughs> life cycle. We're not gonna go over it in detail. Again, just find the different parts of the life cycle. There's meiosis and fertilization. So the haploid portion is here. The diploid portion is shown mainly there. We've gone through all the different parts of the life cycle and we know that it is monoecious. And of course, like all the organisms we've looked at since midterm, all, since just after midterm, it's heterosporic. 
and endosporic. The last thing I want to end on is how much time it takes for these processes that we've been talking about to take place. If we think about the beginning of, of um, the production of the embryo with the beginning of pollination, so we call pollination month one. It takes 13 to 14 months to get the male and the female gametophytes matured. Let's concentrate on the female to me gametophytes. So plus 13 to 14 months, more than a year. for the production of a mature female gametophyte. So pollination then, plus more than a year for that pollen tube to grow down through the megasporangium. So it's really a slow process, not fast growth here. So there's plenty of time then for that pollen, for that megagametophyte and the megasporangium to mature. So those are very slow processes. After fertilization, so then we tap, fertilization then takes place. And then there is another five to seven months for seed development. So something like almost two years, 21, 22 months from the time when the pollen is shed in the spring to when the seeds are shed. So it could be a little longer, even a little longer than that. So about two years after, the, after you see the pollen on your car, the pollen that was being shed then is going to result in the next generation seeds being shed. So a very, very long process that we find in, in the pine, very long and slow process. And that's pretty typical of all the Conifera plants. 